Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. A violent 24 hours in downtown Detroit. Police investigating three shootings that left two people dead. Detroit police on the scene of a shooting inside of a store in Greektown. Investigators saying an argument about someone cutting in line led to a store worker being shot and killed. About an hour later, DPD investigating a second shooting near the river walk in the area of Atwater and Rivard. Detroit police tell us the suspect is in custody. Both victims are expected to be OK. In response to the recent shootings, Detroit police are enforcing a curfew for minors. The move announced tonight came after a quadruple shooting last night at Monroe and Randolph. Our Jacqueline Francis spoke with Chief James White minutes after that shooting in Greektown. As you can see, police have a heavy presence in Greektown tonight, but even so, that didn't stop the gun violence. As the chief says, a person was shot with officers just feet away. The block is closed, the curfew in effect, and the chief on scene. Saturday's shooting in Greektown happened around 8 o'clock inside a store. The officers were out front on uh, patrolling the area, and they heard the gunshot, and it turns out that it was some type of dispute about someone cutting in line. Uh, and the suspect decided to uh, resolve that dispute over the line cutting with a gun. The suspect was arrested right away. The victim, a store employee, taken to the hospital. Friday night, there was more bloodshed in downtown when a man shot three people near Monroe and Randolph, killing one and injuring the two others. The suspect was shot by officers after police say he pulled a gun on them. He's now in custody. So it's not a surprise police have upped their presence. You've got cameras all around here. We've got the eagle eye in the sky on this area, so we're seeing literally everything, all the movement down here. So it's, it's outrageous. Police are also amping up enforcement of the citywide curfew for minors. It begins at 10 p.m. for those 15 and under and 11 o'clock for ages 16 and 17. We saw a whole lot of kids, thousands uh, last night uh, up and down the Riverwalk in Greektown. And, uh, you know, we got to have parental responsibility. We expect to hear from Chief White again in the coming days to get an update on these investigations. Reporting live in Detroit, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. A lot of late-breaking developments. Thank you for following that for us and getting us up to speed, Jacqueline. Our other top story is the weather. After a stretch of sunny 80-degree days, rain is set to move into Metro Detroit. With that rain could come a chance of some severe storms. Let's bring in forewarned meteorologist Ron Hilliard with a look at what we can expect for the rest of the weekend. Ron? Well, I'm held. That's right. We have a chance of some storms coming in. I want to show you what looks like downtown right now. Things are quiet. We have some clouds starting to move in, but all in all, things are still pleasant out there. The temperatures are very mild right now in the mid 60s across the area. Those winds calm to about three miles per hour. So what we're expecting for the rest of the night, those temperatures are going to stay in the 50s. We are not going to see temperatures falling any lower than about the upper 50s across our region. The Zach Track 4D radar showing a couple of those showers across the region, especially around Genesee County. And this right here, the storm system that is going to be coming through our area, strong cold front right now, giving some thunderstorms to places such as St. Louis area, getting down toward Memphis area. They will be seeing those storms tonight. We will have our chance tomorrow. I want to show you what's happening with the risk right now. Today we have that risk and the Midwest and parts of the plains as you get down to the mid south, but it's tomorrow that we have our chance right here in Metro Detroit and Southeast Michigan. You see that marginal risk for all of us around here. So again, you want to watch the storms with us and track them and you can do that with the. New app right there. That is the forewarn weather app. Download the app. You can get accurate forecasts for your neighborhood. And you can get the 4D radar, an hour-by-hour hour forecast. You can get it wherever you are and use it whenever you want to. It's free for Apple and Android. Just search WDIV. Thanks, Ron. State police are warning drivers to slow down after a deadly three-car crash on I-696. It happened in the westbound lanes near Gratiot and Roseville. Police say a 56-year-old man driving well over the speed limit rear-ended a county road truck and trailer. That pickup truck was then struck by another vehicle. The 56-year-old man died there at the scene. No one else was hurt. And over police have made an arrest in the killing of a former police oversight commissioner in that city. 
Police found 51 year old Judy Walton dead in her home Thursday afternoon. The 54 year old suspect is scheduled to be arraigned tomorrow morning on open murder and first degree home evasion charges. In addition to Walton's work in police oversight, she also worked at a nonprofit for more than a decade. At least one person is dead and dozens more sickened after a fungal infection outbreak at a paper mill in the Upper Peninsula. The health department says that person was a contractor at the Billared paper mill in Escanaba. There are now at least 97 suspected or confirmed cases of blastomycosis connected to that factory. The fungus is mostly found in soil and decomposing wood and leaves and does not spread from person to person. The paper mill is closing for at least three weeks for a deep clean. Several ceremonies today to commemorate the 10th anniversary of the Boston Marathon bombings. <laughs> There was a dedication ceremony for a new commemorative marathon finish line. Earlier, the families of those killed walked to each of the bombing sites. Three people were killed and more than 260 were hurt when two pressure cooker bombs went off at the marathon's finish line. The bombing sites have since been turned into memorials. The 127th running of the Boston Marathon will take place Monday. Detroit Historical Society is marking a milestone celebrating 100 years. The 100th year anniversary was in 2021, but because of COVID, they really couldn't commemorate it the way they wanted to. Now they are celebrating any way they can at the Detroit Historical Museum, honoring the past while welcoming the future. Emmanuel Smith says the museum has inspired him. He is among the 36 people being recognized in the newest exhibit, The Hustle. This is a part of my childhood, walking downstairs and getting rock camp. You know, it's just, it's crazy. 100 years and I'm a part of this. The Detroit Historical Society is hosting a 100th anniversary on April 29th. They plan to add five Detroit legends to its Legends Plaza. Prom season is here and we know those dresses, they can be expensive. Pre-Man shows us how one Wayne County commissioner is trying to help with that. If you're a high school student in Wayne County in need of a prom dress, you are going to feel like the bell of the ball. We'll tell you about this incredible event and how you can donate. Before we go to break, Saturday Night Live returns tonight for an all-new episode. Ana de Armas is tonight's host with musical guest Carol G. You can watch SNL right here on Local 4 in about 20 minutes. We'll be right back.